everyone, Ranger Liz here with an amazing interview. Uh, I have with me Miss Melissa Flores, who you're like, if I don't, you know her name. I swear you do. You've seen it on your television screens. Usually oh, it had Beast Morphers Red with a motorcycle behind it and a giant explosion. But she's been behind the scenes rocking things for a few years. And now it's time her name is right there on the front of that comic book. <laughs> yeah. I give you Melissa Flores. Well, Hi. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you again. It's been a minute. It has been a minute. You've been busy. Yeah. You you took I'm over. Busy. You've done Twitch and RPGs, and you, you've been doing all this stuff. And now you're in the world of comic books. Yeah. How did you end up here? Um, how did I end up here? Oh my gosh. Um, well, I was with Power Rangers for 10 years, so I just think everybody knows. And then I wasn't. <laughs> and uh, I decided to take that opportunity to do something that I'd always really wanted to do, which was create for myself. Um, my job at Power Rangers was not to create it was to produce and to be an executive and i loved that job i really did but by the end i was feeling a little itchy to do something that was mine that wasn't about power rangers and thankfully through my years at power rangers i had made some amazing connections with some amazing people and one of them was kyle higgins and Kyle and I remained close and thankfully he respects my sensibilities and my creative instincts. And when Radiant Black was really taking off, he basically just asked if I wanted to write a book. And before that, he had been, I had done a few little comic y things for him already. So he knew I could do it. So um, it wasn't completely out of field. Because if someone said, hey, you want to go write a comic book, wh what do? Well, no. Yeah, no, because I had been working on the Boom comic books for the last six years. So I, it was very much a boot camp in the production process of comic books. And they are not easy. And they are a lot of work for, I think, less pay than a lot of these amazing artists deserve. But uh, it's its own niche in its own field. And yeah, so I knew the process. I knew how it works. Kyle and I had worked extensively together with the Boom Studios team on his run of comic books, I'd obviously worked with the other artists as well and the other writers as well. So he knew I knew what it took to do a comic book. Uh, I also had done a couple one shots for him for Radiant Black. I did uh, a series of backups for The Unleashed, which is a project that I had created with my friend Megan Camarena. Which and... The Unleashed, a huge series, its own world. If you want to, if yes. you, have to, you have to kill some time before Dead Lucky comes out, catch up on The Unleashed. Oh, please do. Please do. If you liked Power Ranger Hyperforce, then I really hope you'd like The Unleashed. It was it was a scripted RPG series that was put together with an amazing group of people, including including Megan Camarena, who played the pink Hyperforce Ranger, Christina. No, not Christina. I'm sorry. Now I'm in Hyperforce mode, so I'm just thinking about Which people. is never a bad uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, no, not at all. Mika Midget, Shelby Grace, Mike Bow, Christopher Sean, who is the Nightwing in the new upcoming Gotham Knights, and it's DM'd by Abria Ayengar, who is just killing it on Critical Role right now. So an amazing group of people who are so talented and so fun. And it is another superhero themed RPG slash scripted series that we worked really hard on. And we got the opportunity to also do a five issue backup series or four issue backup series for The Unleashed in Radiant Black. And the next step was, thankfully, uh, was to create my own for uh, for Massiverse. So that so, was really fun. So Kyle gave me the opportunity to pitch. So he didn't just hand me a series. I had to create a pitch, you... develop it. Exactly. Um, so this is just together... a friend project. This is li like you. This is a whole world because we actually were introduced very briefly. If you picked up Supermassive, because the world that the Dead Lucky is in. I look that this is yeah. so cool. Isn't she so good? Doesn't she look so good? She does, but I gotta say, I'm a little concerned. This is the cutest little thing ever, and she smushes <laughs> it. 
How are you? It's the bad thing. If you read the book, that's the bad thing. Just because it looks cute doesn't mean it's not bad. It just happened to take care of her like a cute little raccoon or something. I actually had the same note when the artist drew it, when French drew it. I'm like, French, this is so cute. Why do we have to kill it? I, <laughs> it's like, well, I maybe love... we did it. We just squished it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's perfect because it's certainly got a reaction out of me. And I think for most <laughs> readers, because you're like, oh, what is this? Oh, my God. And like, we're supposed to <laughs> like this character. What is going on? I mean, well, she does have a skull for a face. So, uh, no. So that was meant to be like the um, the little guy that survived for the big, bad, the big, bad and super massive survived by taking over this little raccoon. And so it's like, no, nope, nope, you're done. <laughs> That was the point, but no, it was it was fun. I uh, to be able to premiere the character in Supermassive was really exciting for me. That was we've been working on this book for a while, at least a year. Uh, so to be able to have people, other people, see Supermassive and I mean, see BB in Supermassive and in such an incredible way it was really fun for me. Like it's essentially Marvel credits. I'm in the Marvel credits of Supermassive. You, in our, so you were the in really credits. Cool bonus yeah, we were the, scene we were the end credit scene in super massive and what what a better way to, to to come out right and it's just because it was it was um this this world and i guess i mean in theory i did like have questions and whatnot but i mean we'll get to them right yeah. I, I was gonna say what kind of world does she live in because we're talking about the massive verse the super massive um but also you, you've got we have radiant black radiant red rogue son at any point did kyle ask you to change the name to something that starts with r <laughs> no but you know i i'm a lot of different things that most of the others are not i think me cherish and megan she co-wrote uh, issue 12 of radiant black we're, we're we're the only ones that don't have beards and aren't white guys so we got we gotta we gotta change it up somehow so uh but yeah, I think actually, no, actually, when we had a discussion, I think it was do not start it with an R. Dude. There's just so many. <laughs> the Dead Lucky was just, it took a while for us to find the right name. And the Dead Lucky, once we came to it, it seemed perfect for what we were trying to say, what the character was and what we talk about in the book, which I gave you a small preview. I don't want you to talk like all about spoilers, but I think like hopefully oh. it makes sense to you uh, when you read it. Um, I, I got done reading it and I just went, damn, that's good. Like, <laughs> it's, it's really awesome. Again, so I don't, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but it has the, it has such a fantastic mix of you automatically, you want to know more about BB and the, this whole world. Like, I want to know more about that restaurant and <laughs> all the food. <laughs> Man, I'm like, I want to eat that. Yes. Um, and these characters already, there's, there's a picture, again, I don't want to give it too much, but I'm already like, oh, okay, and just the design of it is so yeah. cool, I love the skull on the face, the, you, you've seen in the previous, like, a mecha, like, it is this amazing mix of, yeah. uh, I feel punchy and stompy both. Yeah, well, we got really lucky on the designs. The actual superhero suit was designed by Federico Sabatini, who is amazing. He's fantastic. I think he does a lot of work for Marvel. And when we talked to him, I all I told him was that I wanted something that was going that was Toku inspired. So I wanted helmet. I wanted you know form fitting, but I also wanted a Day of the Dead skull inspired helmet because I wanted a cultural reference to the Mexican culture and also to death, which is very important for the character. And he kind of took it from there and made this beautiful suit. And then French Carla, Carla Magno, I think that's how you say it. I'm going to have to ask him. Uh, he designed the rest of the, the rest of the designs. So he designed ghost. He designed BB civilian form, the Moro agent, the Moro guards, the salvation gang, all of the Moro bots, which you're going to see more of. And uh, he just killed it with, with those characters as well. They just all look so fantastic. And I'm so lucky that I was able to work with such amazing artists continue to, with French on this series because they are, it's freaking fantastic. You know, he worked on Power Rangers. 
He worked on Radiant Black. So it feels very much like it lives in the world of Radiant Black, just a different city, which is what I really like about the Massiverse. Every city has its own feel. Uh, New Orleans, where Rogue Sun sits in, is just, it's very supernatural and, and darker and very yeah. moody. And Chicago was very Chicago. <laughs> I don't know it's... how else to say it. And the decor- the direction we took San Francisco is that this is the San Francisco that would exist were a bunch of tech bros given a free license to put all their toys in it. So it could exist now. It's based on technology that does exist now. Uh, but this is the government stepping back and being like, we're done. You fix it. And they're like, yes, we're in. Let's do it. <laughs> and uh, and that's what you get. You get a really elevated high tech San Francisco that is not very decent to poor and homeless people. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all in the name of a beautiful tomorrow. Quote that it's a great, big, beautiful They're tomorrow. Building the tomorrow is building the city of tomorrow. It's going to be a perfect utopia. And if you just get in line and do everything they tell you to do, it's going to happen. So just listen to the peacekeepers. <laughs> and I, the designs of them are also, they're really cool because they, I mean, they do look like something that could exist today. This isn't yeah. like, stepping out of your imagination of what the future could look like because when you look at the peacekeeper you know the robots and stuff you're like oh no that could i mean yeah we, we looked at robots that are built today we looked at stuff that exists today we looked at you're gonna see robot dogs like we looked at those kind of what do they look like we looked at bots what do they look like we looked at what kind of cybernetics exists now like what are the people that are really just into technology into the next wave of bettering humanity doing now with robotics with tech with electricity with cybernetics and that's kind of where we put it so hopefully none none of it's going to feel like this is like 100 years in the future this is five years in the future it just exists now in san francisco nowhere else because this is a test city this is a Mm -hmm. city that the government has given moro free license to try a new way of running things because they just, it got so bad in San Francisco, they just didn't know what else to do. And Morrow came in and said, we'll take care, we're, we'll take care of everything. We're going to privatize healthcare. We're going to privatize the cops. We're going to take care of all of it. You don't have to spend a cent. We're going to do everything. But of course, there's always, there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? There's always a deeper threat or a reason why you might want to not give a company that much power over citizens and that right there is why you need to keep reading you're gonna read issue one and you're gonna be like i i need to know more about you look at this the perfect sell for the books now i'm like yeah i didn't even think about a lot of that stuff more of the like why are they doing this Ooh, by the way comes out august 3rd make sure yes. you get your pre-order in by july 11th if you want to make yes. sure you get on on that cutoff Yes, FOCs are extremely important. So the more we sell before that final order cutoff date, the better for the book. And I really would love to do as many issues of this book as I can. That would be fantastic. Yeah, and this isn't like, this isn't a mini series or a one shot. This is a full on ongoing series in this new ish massive. I mean, the massive versus what, a year and a half old at this point? It's amazing how big it's gotten so quickly, isn't it? It, it really is. We're already yeah. going to have some, like, in-game stuff going on. And I'm like, they've only been around for, like, two years. Oh, oh man. If you knew what Kyle was planning for Radiant Black. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear that. My cats are trying to kill each other right now. And I'm trying <laughs> to figure out if I have to intervene. But they'll I, be okay. They'll figure it out. I sympathize. man. My, my cat actually hates my microphone and will, like, headbutt it sometimes. Oh, that's cute. That's... It's because I'm, you know, attention. But that's... We love our, our furry companions, though, unless yeah. they're actually, you know, evil incarnate little raccoon skull thing, in which case we smush them. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's special about Massiverse and what is that it's it's in within the image world, but it is not overseen by one specific person. Like Kyle is definitely the person that brought us all together. And mm-hmm. he definitely he absolutely he consults on my book. And I'm very grateful for that. But um. But, you know, Matt and Ryan and Cherish and they, everybody works together, but we all have our own projects in our own cities. 
So, you know, BB exists in San Francisco. The book, you don't necessarily have to read the other books to understand BB and her story. We're the way I tell a story is going to be different than the way Ryan tells a story in New Orleans. They all exist in the same world and you know that they know of each other. But yeah. the great thing is that we can keep our stories contained to our books and then hopefully in the future, and I, I don't know any of this, like this is, I'm just working on my book, but maybe we get another supermassive room, maybe get some other kind of crossover. That would be really fun. But the good thing about that is that we all like each other. We all think we're pretty cool. And we all worked together before uh, on Power Rangers and other things. So. Isn't it weird how, it? I mean, Power Rangers, is everything kind of came from there and is now its own you you guys became the well i'm gonna say like the the avengers but you just take a lot of separate heroes putting you all together you have all your own strengths and whatever but in this world you know when you guys all get together like it's it's beautiful chaos yeah it's it's really fun and i'm honestly shocked it worked as it works as well as it does but it does and it speaks to the character of the people that i'm working with they're all just really good people and yeah. really creative and really fun. And we are very fortunate to have amazing artists and everybody works really hard, which is great. Yeah. And it's, I mean, you, your comic is in some way, I mean, it's kind of like your baby, right? This is, you've. Of course. Anything, absolutely. Yeah. So right now it's, I don't want to say in limbo because you're, you're still working on more issues, but like yeah. issue one is, is done. Like, has it been printed yeah. yet? Have you gotten not to, yet, like, feel the actual issue in your hand? Not yet. I'm sure when it happens, I'll, like, freak the freak out. But not yet. It hasn't been printed. Um, that's why the FOC exists. After FOC, that's when it goes to the printers. But it has been done for a while. Uh, I'm currently scripting episode issue four. And French is inking issue three. So Ooh. we are a little bit ahead. Uh, I have six issue arc planned out. We know what's going to happen. Uh, so it's just a matter of seeing how well it sells and see. Hopefully we get to do more. Hopefully but, you get a, we, maybe we even do a reprint. You know, just say yeah, it. I don't know if Image does reprints anymore. I think right. once it's gone, it's gone for Image because Ooh. of the paper shortage. So, so. Buy, maybe you buy one for yourself and then maybe buy one. Just put it in the sleeve. Just keep yeah. it. Because... I mean, some of those retailer covers are incredible. I've been so excited to see what, like, I one, just shocked that people wanted to do retailer covers, but some of them are just, and our variants as well are just so good. And I, I, I grew to appreciate the love for variants with Power with Boom because they really have a lot. We don't have quite as many, but, uh, but I do love a good artist and an interpretation to see the character that I've imagined in my head for so long on these covers with these artists that I've never dreamed of being on a part of this has been pretty outstanding. That's, um, so I guess I, I, I do want to talk about BB a little bit. Yeah. Um, cause she was in the arm. Was it just army or was it? Cause I didn't, no, I didn't US know. I was like, oh, army maybe veteran. it was like Air Force or something. Army. She's um, what kind of was your inspiration to tell, the story of a character like her who would uh, i'm i if you want to talk about what she has and whatnot because i don't want to spoil it but um a character like her and uh, man maybe i should just butcher that question and just completely this is where hey, I, I know where you're coming from she's a very complex character and she's coming from a different world than everyone else the character was very heavily inspired by uh my partner Sandra, and also friends that are veterans. And the reason how, how that came about was just being in a relationship for 10 years with a soldier or a former soldier is as a civilian, there's just things I do not understand. And it gets me very upset sometimes because I want to understand. I like to think I'm a very empathetic person and I should understand. And I... She says, I don't, and it makes me mad. But also, you see how all that time in the service affects them and changes how they think. And BB, being in Army, coming home after having 
a really traumatic experience and living with a lot of survivor's guilt and a lot of PTSD, it's my attempt to understand it and also to honor it, to really think about what these soldiers go through because I'm not a soldier. I don't understand what they go through, but they do go through a lot. And it's, it's not an attempt to be political. It's just an attempt to look at these characters, these veterans and shine a light on PTSD and survivor's guilt. Uh, we, a big, a big part of it also is that we are uh, one of our best friends who's a U.S. veteran, uh, ended up committing suicide a couple of years ago and it really hit us hard. And it was one of those things where he was just the nicest, happiest guy. And you just have no idea why things happen the way they do. And it was also a struggle to understand that. Um, mm -hmm. Really. Uh, there's a letter in the back of the first issue that kind of goes into it better than I think I'm talking about it now, but it really becomes a, let's look at this character from this kind of lens. Let's look at BB and see how a superhero reacts to that kind of thing, goes into that world when she's already mm -hmm. semi-lived it as, as an army, and she's doing it by herself because her entire platoon is dead. And what does that do to somebody's psyche, especially when they come home to a home that no longer exists for them, and they come home yeah. to people that they remember as being their home and they're not the same anymore and she's not the same anymore. And so you're struggling to find this identity in a city that feels new and strange when everything feels familiar, but not, mm. and you're stuck between worlds and how do you come back to the world? And so you kind of see her become obsessed with living in the suit because it's so much easier mm -hmm. to be the suit than it is to be herself if that makes sense that makes perfect sense that sounds uh, wow yeah that just the story of that that sounds amazing and from what i got to read in issue one yeah that's you, you've done a a really good job at that thank you i tr i tried i don't take that lightly i don't uh want people to think that i'm just trying to write a soldier um, a story about a badass soldier i'm really trying to just write a character that i feel is complex and honors uh veterans in a way that doesn't sensationalize them doesn't sensationalize where they come from but just accepts their journey and who they are and who they're trying to be mm -hmm. and the sacrifices that they've made because it's not easy but she does get to be at least a little bit of a badass right Oh, this book is a superhero book. Okay. <laughs> this is a superhero book. It's not like, I feel like we went super downer. No, no, no. It's a superhero book. She has fun. BB, but actually, I really like her. She's a little sarcastic, a little fun. She's very quippy. She, uh, she doesn't talk to a lot of her friends, but she does talk. And you'll see what I mean in issue one. She's you, kind of a chatterbox. And I was really like, oh, I got you. I feel you on that one. <laughs> I do. But, and I know that was yeah, kind no, of a she's a lot of fun. You're going to see mechs. You're going to see big. This is the mech book. This is the robot book. So you're going to see a lot of mech fights. She treats Ghost, her mech, as a partner. And, and so you see a lot of fun fights and a lot of fun just scrapping around uh it's a superhero book it's a superhero's journey so it is i wouldn't do this if it wasn't for the fun of it it's a fun book i promise i and i swear as soon as you name your mech it makes it cute yeah like it doesn't have to you could be like oh it's killer death whatever you're like oh but he goes by george and you're just like ah yeah i love i love ghost he's such a sweetie ghost yeah he's ghost a is awesome um man you you've Really, you, you went from, at least I, I knew your name from television to Power Rangers to here you are writing your own full-on comic. You uh -huh. have issue two, three, four, the whole arc. I'm so excited. What, um, I have to say, is, is you've done action TV, executive uh -huh. producer stuff of that. You've written stuff. You've done Twitch. You've done RPGs. You've done voice acting. By the way, if Only I didn't through even sheer mention, necessity, but yes, <laughs> if I didn't even mention that in your talents, you've done voice acting. So if you know you ever have to do it live, you got all the hiyas. What else does the future hold for you right now? 
I mean, right now it's just, I'm, I'm very blessed and then I get to just create my stories. So I'm focusing on writing and producing. That's what I'm really, I, I will always be a producer at heart. I loved producing. I loved it when I was at Power Rangers. I think one of the things that Power Rangers taught me was that I don't have to just focus on television and features. There's a lot of cool content to, and to be made in things that are like RPGs, like comic books, like video games and podcasts even. So that's what I've, I've been focusing. I do have, I'm, I do have work that I'm doing for those mediums for television and feature and all that stuff. But uh, I'm also really excited about the stuff that's coming, which I can't talk about yet, but that's coming for those other mediums that that's been a lot of fun, just the diff embracing the different mediums and doing the best you can in them, but also trying to put your stamp on them. And, and I was able, so fortunate to be able to do that with Megan for the unleashed. And I'm really excited to do that for the dead lucky to have an image book and have that be my first book is an honor uh, that I never, ever thought would happen. And so I am just really blessed and grateful. I will always love power Rangers and I will always be proud of the work I did on power Rangers, even though I know a lot of people that like Saban, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I'm excited to, to be behind the, the driver's seat to, of a lot of this stuff. It's been fun. Cause you have this world. I mean, it's only a, a year and some old and, and you're creating your own San Francisco. Like, this, the sky's the limit, really, for you, for this book, for the whole thing. I, I mean, I hope so. You know, I, I'm just excited to, like, to get that book. I mean, I got a tattoo of Power Rangers when I left Power Rangers. And uh, I plan on doing the same for BB. Like, I, I want to get a, de a Dead Lucky helmet tattoo I as well. Because I feel like that'll be, here's the next thing. It'll yeah. be fun. Well, hopefully you get it before it ends because we don't want it to end for a very, very, very long time. I hope so, man. I really am. And by the way, when I say man and dude, it's a, it's, I see it as a gender neutral term, but <laughs> I hope so. I'm, I'm super excited about the book. I really love it. I hope other people love it too. I definitely, it, it's coming from, I, I believe, you know, it feels like it's coming from a heavier place because of BT, uh, BB's PTSD and trauma, but I really tr wanted to do everything I could to just make this a fun story that just has complex characters. And that's something we've always tried to do, even with you know, the Boom comic books. Yeah. So I'm hoping people will, will really just be along for the ride and the mystery because the, there's some surprises even in issue one that uh, I hope people will be into. And I, I can't wait for the issue to come out so I can talk about them. I the will, to come. since you thankfully let me read issue one, a little preview, I'm going to have to go back and read it again because again, when I got done reading it, I was just like, oh my God, like, okay, yeah. I'm in, I'm in. And uh, and it just gives me another comic to look forward to every month to go pick up. And if well, you, you so want to get it on your poll list, make sure you guys have it pre-ordered. Guys, see, it's also, it's like a 90, when you kind of grew up in a certain time, like everything is like, you guys are dudes, or like everyone's a dude, right? <laughs> hey, dudes, July yeah. 11th is when you need to make sure you have this pre-ordered by. If you don't, your comic store should probably still have some. But make sure you get there because Image might not ever reprint it. And you're going to want to have it whenever down the road you're like, huh, I got this issue one day it came out because it's awesome. Comes out August 3rd. Again, pre-order July 11th. Issue two comes out September 7th. We have issue two date, too. I made sure to throw that in there. Yes. But yes, uh, it'll be fun. And um, I'll be at Comic-Con and C2E2 promoting the book. So, uh It'll be and fun. a bar in Lockport. I wish I could go. Ugh. There's pretty oh, radiant black fans. There's uh, it's some bar in Lockport, but there's going to yes, be a it's meeting. It's the bar where, uh, spoiler alert for radiant black, where uh, something very terrible happened to Nathan. Yeah, in the comic books. So we're we're kind of it's like a celebrating a death day. <laughs> That's. <laughs> but yeah, we want really I mean, the first I... few issues. Like you don't have to get past like issue like nine or so, but. Yeah, there. I was born in Chicago and I've never been since, so I'm excited to, oh. to get to know that city. Well, enjoy. I've only been there a few so. times, but if I live in St. Louis, so by, if you guys ever need a center point, 
between Chicago and like, you know, New Orleans or whatever in San Francisco, just come to St. Louis. I promise we have plenty of crime that you guys can help clean up. <laughs> BB's going to be like pretty busy for a while in San Francisco. The Salvation Gang isn't going to let up anytime soon, but I appreciate that. So anytime, anytime. Uh, I am really, really excited for this book, and I want to say thank you so much for talking to me about it. Uh, I can't wait to help spread the word. I can't wait to get more people on board. And this is my my only physical prop, you know. I have it is this. I mean, come on. Yeah, she looks. Doesn't she look so good? She does. She does. The skull. Just okay. Look right there. That is such a badass mask. It really is. Um, so make sure you pre-order yours. Again, coming to comic book stores August 3rd. Get your pre-orders in on July 11th. This is... Miss By July 11th, yeah. By July 11th. Thank you so much. Give it up. Like, comment, and subscribe. Everything. Thank you to Melissa Flores. Any last comment you'd like to say? Uh, I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you for everything you do. Oh, well, thanks. And you too, everyone out there, thank you for talking to me. And uh, I'll see you next time. Ranger Nation, Comic Nation. If no one told you today, I love you, and I think you're awesome. And I'll see you at the next video. Toodles! <laughs>